Hey everyone, my name is Nolan. Welcome back to another All The Mods 10 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can set up auto crafting requests from Applied Energistics. This will probably be one of, if not the most important tutorial you'll watch for your All The Mods 10 episode, so watch closely. Now, when it comes to auto crafting and Applied Energistics, there's two things you need to know. There's a computer that runs the request or the job, and what do I mean by request or job? Well, it's whatever item I want. And then there's the assembler that creates the object you want. In Applied Energistics, the molecular assembler can be replaced with the assembler matrix, and the coprocessing unit slash crafting storage can be replaced with the quantum computer. But those are both way late games, so we'll get there eventually. For now, we're going to keep it nice and simple, and enjoy the beautiful sunset while you hit that subscribe button. Can you do both at the same time? I don't know. Another point before I continue, if you guys don't know how to get power, if you don't know how to set up an applied energistic storage system, make sure you watch my previous videos because everything I'll talk about in this episode, except for one thing I've covered in previous videos. Playlists will be linked down in the description so you can find those videos to help you. So in the last episode or the last tutorial specifically, I talked about how to get a lot of raw ingredients using Inferium Farms. Now, in that episode, I also showed you guys a crafter, which allows ingredients to be automatically crafted using power. But as you can see, there's a little bit of a crafting tree here in order to craft that item, and I don't want to have to do that every single time that I want another crafter. So, what if there was a way I could go into my storage system, find a tier 3 crafter, click it, and it would auto-craft all the ingredients for me and spit it out. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now. So apart from your crafting terminal, which gives you access to your storage system, you're going to need a pattern access terminal and a pattern encoding terminal. Down in the description, I gave you guys all the ingredients you need to set all this up. So go ahead and make those two things, place them down, connect it to your system, and then take the blank patterns and throw them in by shift clicking. Now here is where you will start making the crafting patterns. Now what I like to do is by default click substitutions to enabled. Down the line, let's say you wanted to craft something like an aluminum plate. This requires ingots and a hammer. Now this hammer is a tool that takes durability when you craft something. If you don't turn substitutions on, it will craft a new hammer every time you want an aluminum plate. If you leave substitutions enabled and you put a full hammer in here, it will use whatever hammer's in there regardless of the durability. So it will save you some resources and storage space. Now, let's say I want some planks. Let's go ahead and throw my oak log in here. And just like in a crafting table, I throw the ingredient in and it gives me the output. Now, in order to obtain this output, I need to click this arrow here, which gives me the oak log or the oak planks crafting pattern. Now, I need a spot to put this pattern. So somewhere along my ME storage system, I'm going to place down a pattern provider and I'm going to put the pattern inside. Now, what this pattern does is it will look at whatever item has been requested and pull the ingredients from your storage system and put them into the pattern provider. Then whatever output is touching this pattern provider, it will push those ingredients into the output. The output will process that information and then spit the item back into the pattern provider and the pattern provider will put the item back into your storage system. So I just made a crafting pattern. All crafting patterns are going to need something called a molecular assembler. So if I was to request for some planks, a log will be put into this molecular assembler. It will turn the log into planks. It will be outputted back into my system and then I'll be able to see it in here. And as you can see, there is a plus right there next to oak planks. And if I try to craft something, you see I can't do that yet because I need an actual crafting CPU. Now for the earlier stages of applied energistics, you will most likely be using these like ME storage components, these default ones instead of the mega ones. In fact, even right now, I'm still trying to avoid these mega ones. But if I go to craft a 256 storage component, you can see it only takes about 1,400 bytes. Sorry, my allergies just started acting up there. Holy cow. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use a 16K crafting storage. But basically what this crafting storage does is it says, okay, you want oak planks? I'm going to get you oak planks. How many bytes does that take? Well, it takes 1400 bytes. Since I'm a 16K crafting storage, I can do that. Now, going back to the tier three crafter, as you can see, there are a lot of sub ingredients that need to be crafted, like redstone torches. Now, there are a lot of sub ingredients, but there's not a lot of different types of sub ingredients. Because of that, we're not gonna need a lot of coprocessors. However, if we had something like a 256 storage component, there are a lot of different and varying sub-ingredients. So what this coprocessing unit is going to do 
is it is going to allow the crafting job in here to split out the ingredients to all sorts of different systems in order to more efficiently craft your items. Now, just for the sake of this tutorial, we aren't gonna notice a difference with four co-processing units. This is just what I recommend you do because it's really not that expensive and it will just make things more efficient. Now, if I go to request for planks, as you can see, I can now do it. The log got thrown in there and it happened really fast, but <laughs> we got the planks out of that. Now, let's say I wanted 100 planks. So it's gonna throw 25 logs in here and it's going fast, but, we can make this faster. I have found that the best way of making these requested jobs faster is to add more molecular assemblers on each of these faces to con that connect to the pattern provider. So what it will do is it will spit out the ingredients evenly among the different faces here to make it run even faster. So now if I request 100 logs, what you will notice is it goes up 16 each time instead of four. So now let's make a tier two crafter. I'm gonna do that just because a tier three isn't gonna fit into one pattern provider. If I go all the way down the crafting tree, you can see here I need gold nuggets. But wait, I don't have gold nuggets. I only have raw gold in here. Well, you could do more than just craft things. You can process things using a pattern provider. Now I could hook this pattern provider up to a furnace, but the problem is, is the default vanilla Minecraft furnace can't automatically output. If I use something like an energized smelter from Mechanism, connect it to power, this thing can receive ingredients and it can automatically eject them back into the pattern provider. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna use this. However, we haven't covered this yet. That'll be the next video tutorial. So instead of setting up a crafting pattern, we're gonna set up a processing pattern. Now what you can do is just type in gold ingot, click on it and there will be a little plus button here for encoding the pattern. So let's go up to smelting raw gold to gold ingot and we'll click plus. Now this is a very, very simple pattern. So you really don't need to make all those extra steps to set this up. Now, instead of actually manually putting the pattern into this pattern provider, the pattern access terminal allows you to access all the pattern providers connected into your system from one spot. So the energized smelter is right here. So I'm gonna put the pattern right there. Now this can get cluttered pretty fast. So what you can do is if you have a spot where you're not gonna use the pattern provider like ever, you can click X right here instead of check and it will not show up in your system. So the circumstance in which these pattern processors come in handy is when you have something like a quantum multi-threader. Look at those ingredients. I do not wanna to have to click and drag and number all those ingredients. It's way better to just search it up in the JEI and then click and cone pattern and it will do it for me. Okay, yeah, but so let's see if I can craft a gold ingot. Yes, we can. It is now smelting the raw gold into a gold ingot. And as you can see, it just got outputted. Nice. Well, let's set up the crafting recipe for a tier two crafter. So we're gonna need a crafting table. We are going to need some sticks we're gonna need some nuggets and some blue dye. Now I'm just gonna throw all those patterns into my pattern provider, so that way I can craft them. Now one thing to note is the gold nugget requires a gold ingot, as you can see. If you don't have any gold ingots available, it will automatically go down the chain and craft all the previous ingredients in order to craft the item you want. That's why it is so helpful, because when you have something like this, I mean this actually, I mean I can show you. This thing takes like hundreds of thousands of items. 123,000 redstone. Yeah, I don't wanna have to manually do that chain. I want it to go all the way down, craft all the small ingredients, and then work its way back up. Kinda like a pyramid, I guess. Okay, so now I need to craft a redstone torch. I need to craft a machine frame. Now I'm gonna put those in there. Okay, and here is the recipe for a tier one crafter. And then a tier two crafter just looks like this. So now let me get rid of all these sub ingredients that I've crafted. Okay, we're good. And if I go to request a tier two crafter, you can see that all the items are being put in there and they got crafted really fast. Now you can actually speed this up even more. These molecular assemblers can have acceleration cards to make this like an instantaneous thing. So yeah, that's kind of pretty much it. Now remember, these processing patterns can be hooked up to pretty much anything in all the mods 10. Now you'll have to forgive me, there is so much going on in my base that recording with shaders on is going to drop my frames a lot. But yeah, I have these pattern providers hooked up to mechanism machines. I have one hooked up to an ener energizing orb from Pawa. I have them hooked up to the enchanting apparatuses from that one mod that I can't pronounce. Actually, that's an imbument chamber. This is an enchanting apparatus. I have them hooked up to disillusion chambers. 
And yes, not only can pattern providers export items, they can export fluids as well. So you can get pretty freaking crazy with these things. So yeah, obviously when you fill up here, you'll need to make some more pattern providers and molecular assemblers. Oh, and by the way, you don't need one CPU for each pattern provider. You just need one CPU for the amount of jobs you want to run at one time. For example, if I wanted to craft a tier two crafter and something else at the same time, I couldn't do that. If I only have one CPU, if I had two CPUs, then yes, I could do that. So yeah, that's going to wrap up the, this video there. If you guys found it helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more all the mods 10 guides. And how amazing is that? You can watch the sunset as this video ends. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next video tutorial where we actually cover these mechanism machines. Bye-bye.